Greetings, and welcome to The Power of Vintage. In today's episode, we're going to continue on last week, where we took a look at the side cart, the Atari ST. An awesome add-on that can make it very easy to get an Atari ST up and running fairly quickly. But it's a bare PCB right now. I'd like to make it look more like something like this. Let's get to it. So we're going to kick this off with a little bit of my design philosophy. I like to do 3D printing. I like to do design work. That's something that's fun. I did early in my career, and I, I'd like to <laughs> take advantage of this opportunity, these kind of opportunities to have fun with it. All right, and what I do first is I first want to lay out what does this need? What are some of the features that I want to make certain this has? Number one, I want this to have a shape similar to an original Atari cart. Shape. Atari. All right, that's one of the things. Number two, I wanna make certain that we have these four holes here. These are great mounting holes. I'd like those mounting holes to be in place. I'd like to have some features that go through those holes, all right, to make certain that this does, is rigid and is, is hold, held steady in the cartridge. Use mounting holes. And as you can see, I'm a lefty and my handwriting is terrible. But if you can read that, well, you, you hear me talking about it. Use mounting holes. Great. We have to have an opening for the SD card. Otherwise, it's not fun to try to get stuff in and out of it. Because what I'd like this to be is semi-permanent. Right. I don't want to have to pull this out of the, the enclosure multiple times. I want this to get kind of be in that enclosure and be permanent in that enclosure. All right. So, so we have the, uh, the SD card mounting holes. I want the shape to be similar to the Atari. It needs to have buttons. Because I don't want this open. I want this fully enclosed. Shape fully enclosed. We'll call this fully enclosed. buttons that go through the case. So and that's not going to be the case. So I don't, I don't want to just a hole on the case that I can poke down in there. I'd like to actually have a button that sits on top of it, basically a, a, probably a shaft that's guided through the through the casing. We definitely need one for select. We probably want one for select as well as uh, boot select on the, the Pi, the, the Pi Zero or no, whatever that pie is. Pi Pico, excuse me, that's what it is. All right, um, and I think that's about it. So let me just think, we have the buttons here. It might be nice to have an LED optional LED. I don't know if I wanna to try to desolder that and add another, uh, uh, an LED that comes to the surface, we'll see. Maybe, maybe I end up doing that at some point. Uh, let's see, anything else? <laughs> Mistake proof it. You don't want to be able to insert the cartridge the op upside down. So I want a mistake proof insertion. All right, um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that should be good. So in order to do this, I'm going to break out my handy dandy calipers. And we're going to take some internal measurements initially. So because what we need is we need, and I do it in millimeters because I like millimeters. So forgive Forgive me all my wonderful imperial um, 
<laughs> measurement for friends. Let's see here. So the basic PCB. Let's just say it's it's 42 point, 42 .2 millimeters or so, approximately. 42.2 by how long? And the, as you can see with this, right? So there's an opening at the bottom for the cartridge, but the outer shell is going to completely enclose this. So I'm going to want the this to be long enough to order to a fit the whole thing, right? Actually, you know what? We, let's go, let's go to the, this part here. So we're, these are, these are all inner dimensions. We're going to do outer dimensions eventually as well. So let's go, let's go 98. It's about 98. And part of my philosophy here, <laughs> what you will see is I go through an iterative process. I, I will come up with a rough shape internal, external. It's not going to be pretty. I'm not going to add all the fillets and all the other fancy stuff on the outside, but we're going to get the 3D printed shape to begin with to make sure we get these posts fitted properly. We get the openings in the right places because it's, uh, you know, I, even if I take the best measurements, I'm probably going to be off on some of them. So I'd like to get a rough idea as a starting point and then deviate from those rough, those rough numbers as we go forward. Um, the other part is we're going to have to have an internal height. Let's do this again so it's not so difficult to see. All right, and so 17.5 uh, millimeters. I'm going to add a little bit onto that. We're going to call it 18 millimeters. And the reason I'm going to have that is just at least 18 millimeters on the inside. That gives me an idea of, of how much space we're going to need on the inside of this guy. All right. Let me think where else. Uh, opening from left, internal. Seventeen seventeen point five millimeters. SD card. It's going to start at around, let's go 1.75. See, I, I like to draft this up. I'll put this in a, a nice little Excel document to help me out with that. Um, let's get the external shapes uh, set up. EOD shapes and really what we can't do is we can't take the full length but we can take this shape of the cartridge 55 millimeters height I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use this bottom plate right here that looks like it was just added on to stabilize it we'll look at that later uh, we are at uh, 21.2 by 21.2. All right. And then the length, we'll, what we'll do is, let's see what the thickness, the thickness of this, the, the plastic inside. Is it, there's a lip? No, it's just a thickness. Um, 2.3 millimeters. I'm going to go. Thickness. It's 2.3 millimeters. I might just go two millimeters to keep it a nice round number. It makes it it makes it a lot easier for the math from a thickness perspective if I have that. All right. Last thing is also let's go slot dims. That's for these guys here. Yeah. Again, you you're seeing my very much shorthand for, for <laughs> defining how, how I actually build the stuff. I might use this, this roll B roll, but I might not. We'll see. Okay. So let's do the ID here. Uh, 
51 millimeters. And does it change? Yes, that's where right, that's the fillet. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go 50, 51 millimeters. That looks pretty darn close for 51. And then height. Seventeen by seventeen millimeters. All right, and we'll figure out exactly where the z-axis of the cartridge needs to be. That can be adjusted over time, right? But I want the enclosure correct first. All right. Now, move over to the computer. All right, what you see here is one, two, three design. This is a tool that I like to use, simple free tool. It's not super crazy complex, but allows me the flexibility to do some fun stuff that I can then 3D print. This isn't going to be a comprehensive uh, recording of all the features that were added and the whole process whereby I, uh, I manipulate the, the 3D model to be able to generate it and then 3D print it but it's more indicative of just the process in general. So just creating the base feature, then creating some tool solids or tool shapes that are then extrude into that original solid, removing material uh, as needed. I like to start off with the, with the initial basic shape and then remove material from it rather than building lots of little features on top. Although there are still will be some features that are added on. What you'll see next, you'll see me building the various different mounting pillars, whatever you want to, pylons, whatever you want to call them, tubes, <laughs> shafts, whatever, uh, that are that are used to go through the holes and actually position the, the side cart here. All right, so so that that's the, the process I'm using here. Uh, and I'm not exactly the uh, measure twice, cut once kind of a mentality. I am more of buy tenths pieces of wood, cut ten times until I get it right. So I like to go through the iterative process. And, and what you'll see in a few minutes or a little later on in the video is all the different designs that I went through. And, and not really designs. They're not different designs. They're the same designs, just the iterations that were gone through. Uh, I like to design, print, test, check. Design, print, tech, check, etc. Until I get it right. So as you can see here, we're creating, the, like I said, the... the the shafts that go through the, the mounting holes will then uh, raise them up a little higher. As you can see, I'm, I'm, that was the initial print. I like to print it small so that I can just get the shape and size and positioning correctly. And, and then I adjust it forward, right? So raising the walls to make it a little higher, uh, raising the mounting portions of those tubes a little higher. You see them kind of stretching up higher so that the, the PCB will rest on that. And in, in the end, if you take a look at the 3D print on three, Thingiverse, those mounting pillars, the, the, the bases of the pillars, they actually are substantially thicker, wider, larger diameter. So it can rest more, more stably on those. And also it become more rigid as well. But that's my process. This is, this is how I design. Hope you enjoyed this. Here we have step number one for fitting, fitting testing. For a couple of things. First off, let's test out. We got the four four pegs here. We have the micro SD card slot here, and uh, the size looks about right. Things are fitting in properly. We have the micro SD card slot is in the right place. There's a it's a little tight up here. I might want to just give a shift everything down this direction just a smidge. The opening for the cartridge contacts there looks good. Although one of the things you'll see, right, comparing these two, I need to push this up higher. So a couple things we're going to want to do here. Uh, I'm going to want to shift this a little bit further down here. Each of these four mounting line mounting pegs. I'm going to want to shift this the micro SD card slot over this way. I'm going to grow this a little higher. These need to grow up. So as you can see, the printing is really kind of crummy, but it gives at least an idea of what it would look like. 
these lower mounts support how high up this goes. So these will need to come up higher, as will this. We'll just extend it a little further. Like I said, shift it a little bit this way and a little like a little bit to this direction, a little bit this direction to make it a little easier to the micro SD card comes slot micro SD card to come out. Shift this a little bit this direction and then just grow it a little higher and then print the next example. All right, let's get to it. All right, here's the progression of the various different 3D print designs. As you can see here, this was a first test, very rough shape, really trying to make certain I got the location of the SD card proper. Also right here, this would be where the button is and then the placement of the four holes or four pins rather. It's close, but not quite. Here's a, an updated version. As you can see, these pins, I'm printing in a very rough mode. So these posts, pins, not posts, are uh, not posts, but not pins, but posts, yes. They're very fragile because I was printing with uh, low infill density. This is just kind of, and the two color was not intentional. I ran out of filament, so I just replaced it mid-print. Mid and uh, this got me a little closer to where I wanted to go. The next step was then, as you can see, more broken posts. Now taking in the next step further, I wanted to make these bases a bit thicker so it had more, uh, so that the PCB would have more to rest on. I added this rest as well here and here to provide, again, a similar support on the front and the back of the PCB. Seems to be working pretty good. Adjusted the position of the buttonhole I also printed out a top now at this point in time and uh, just flat surface here. These were uh, receptacles, uh, female ports for the posts here to lock into. They're a little big as you can see here. I, I try to oversize them a little bit just because there's some, the, the tolerances in the print shape and dimensions are sometimes a little not the best. so. It started out large, they were too large, not a problem. Next version was this bottom version that we have right now. It's pretty close to being done. This post is just a little too far forward. And I didn't notice it earlier on because it was the infill was relatively light. And because the infill is relatively light, I could bend that post relatively easily. Uh, in this case, now that it's more rigid, it, this one was, I needed to adjust it. So I do have a new design that's ready to go that adjusts this slightly so it's a better fit here. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. What you'll see here also, you see this little ridge on the inside. This goes to a mating surface on the upper portion of it where it slots into place. It slots into place like so, snaps in wonderfully. The problem with this is that this um, lower ledge is too shallow. It needs to go in deeper this direction in order to be able to properly plug in the cartridge. It, 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 in, it interferes with the actual Atari ST case. As you can see here, this is kind of just looking at the shape of an original cartridge housing versus this. Interestingly, I didn't realize how much thicker this cartridge PCB is than this guy here. I probably ought to maybe sand down the edges slightly so that it gets a, goes in a little easier. Now the last version here 
takes us the next step further and just pushes this back a little further. We're almost done. Last steps left to do is I'm going to design a nice little button or post that will fit through this, this slot here. It'll have a larger, uh, think of it as a, a rectangle on the inside that presses up against this button here. I'll probably have a, a little, think of it as a ledge on top that will rest on top here so it doesn't flop down. And then it'll just be held in place by that there. And uh, like I said, I adjusted this uh, a little forward, but in its current state, it's looking pretty good. Is it perfect? No, but it's it's actually pretty darn close tonight to where I want it to be. All right, so we're gonna take a look. We're gonna zoom out and then take a look at the Atari ST here, where I will slot this guy in. There we go. I just got to find out. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. And it is in slotted in place and is working properly. So that case is looking pretty good. Not, not finalized yet. We'll go to the next steps and uh, come back probably tomorrow. It takes a while to do the 3D printing, obviously. And hopefully we'll have this done. All right. All right. Here are all the pieces together. I did not reprint this bottom case. It takes a long time. I know it's gonna work. It's close enough. Not perfect, but good. We have a button now for the select button. We would just wanna put this guy back down. Not the best button. I could probably make this a little chunkier and a little shorter. As you can see here, I've got these little legs on it to kind of keep it from falling down. But really, I can make the legs a little chunkier. Make this a little chunkier as well, probably a little shorter. It's a little too long, I think. But, oh, sorry. That's <laughs> putting on it properly. We have a working case. Okay, the button doesn't, doesn't uh, button works perfectly, keeps working, and doesn't fall down. I mean, that, that was my biggest concern is that it probably could, no, let's see, no. What I should probably do is I should probably make these legs thicker so they butt up closer against the wall of this. So I'll make that change. I'll shorten this down a smidge. I'll thicken up these little leg pieces. That's pretty, pretty flimsy right now. We can, uh, yeah, chunk this up a little bit out, probably half a millimeter that way, probably another full millimeter deep, tall, whatever you want to call that direction. And it prints so quickly, I'll just get another one real quick. We have a new button. It's chunkier. It is shorter. So let's see how it goes. Replacing this guy with this guy. Ooh, that's nice actually. That feels good. I think we're good. I'm sure we could probably make it even a little bit better, but I'm happy. I'm happy with this. It plugs in nicely. Not the best color. I mean, obviously the, the finish, this was printed right off the board, off the, uh, the build surface, and it was a little too close, but uh, whatever. It's all good. We can paint it if we wanted to, but I got the SD card slot perfectly available. The other buttons I'm not as concerned about. This is the one that really matters. I'll get this posted on Thingiverse. Hey, thanks for watching. <laughs> this has been a little bit of a different video, but one of the things that I, I find is interesting, you know, that 
I love 3D printing. I've been doing it for many years. It's a fantastic skill and tool set to have when you're working with retro computers because either you don't have parts and you need to make new parts, design new stuff, or you old parts break and you need to come up with replacements. So, all right. Have a fantastic day. Bye.